What's going on guys, Cordy here and welcome back to another Paragon video. In today's video, we're going to be going over Murdoch. Murdoch is one of the more popular rangers. He's he's pretty fun, he does great damage, he has a long range ult, which is awesome. He has really good poke in the lane and a really good knockback to help peel for yourself. Alright guys, so let's quickly go into his abilities and we'll go through leveling order for him. Alright, so Murdoch's first ability is going to be his Q. This, this ability is called Target Check. This is going to be a really good poke in lane as you get into auto attack range of the enemy player. You'll press this ability and instant lock on and deal the quick burst of damage. So you won't be missing um, any of those shots. It's just pretty lock on, easy, easy ability to do. Murdoch's E ability is called Commence Bombardment. Whenever you use this ability, you'll take a knee and you'll launch grenades and AoE damage. They do pretty solid damage um, and they have a little bit of explosion. However, this ability I don't really prioritize because you're you're stationary whenever you use this ability. So you're prone to getting poked. You're prone to taking a lot of damage. You have no mobility. You're just a sitting target essentially this ability is really good if you're getting poked down in lane and you don't want to miss farm so instead of you backing this actually ability will let you to sit behind your tower and then just launch nades at the at the wave to do a little bit of damage or a little way to use this ability is if they're trying to back under their tower so say if you got a lot of pressure and you're clearing the wave instead of letting them back you can use this ability to launch nades and it goes a pretty far distance all right, and Murdoch's next ability is going to be his right click. This ability is a pushback that deals damage. This is a really good pill ability for Murdoch. If someone is in your face and you're you wanted to get some space, if they're more if they're a melee character as well and you want to get some space, use this ability and it'll knock them back. That way you can keep that distance between you and keep shooting from fire and rage. This is a really good damage ability as well. This actually ability you want to level up second. So you want to start with your Q and then you want to max prioritize this secondly over your E ability. And the last ability, the one that everyone likes about Murdoch is his ultimate, Ultra Precise Shot. This ability is pretty awesome. It can go anywhere on the map. You have vision on them, press this ability, and it's gonna go all the way through and hit them, pass, bypassing everything. It doesn't lock on, so you do have to aim it, but this is a really great ability to help out another lane if there's someone that's really weak in, in the solo lane, weak in the middle lane. If they're jungling, if your team needs a little bit of damage, while they're fighting and you're still trying to get your farm, you can look over there, use this ult to shoot them from across the map just to help or possibly get a kill, which would be helpful for you. So you're not leaving your lane, but still getting kills. This ability you want to max whenever you can. This is a great ability by Murdoch. All right, so let's get into the builds. As far as starters goes, your starter item is going to be the redstone. The other stone just gives you straight attack speed, which is probably good on, on Revenant, but the other ones I wouldn't really put it on there. And whenever you get that upgraded, it's only going to give you a little bit more attack speed and not a lot of power. Whereas the redstone is going to give you more power. And with, all, with the other items that you build into, you'll be getting more attack speed regardless. So I always just prefer going the redstone. The first item that you're actually going to build into, you're not going to build into your starter yet. That's going to be your pretty much your last item that you're going to build into. The first item that you want to go to that I go is the emergency treatment. This is going to give you uh, power, attack speed, and then life still. It's going to give you some sustain in lane. With a passive, it increases life cell by 20% for five seconds if the hero's health is below 40%. So this is going to help you sustain longer in lane. If you do get really low, you can get that extra burst of life still to get, kind of get you back up uh, in lane. That way you can just farm. You, your main priority is just farm, farm, farm and get your items. This item is going to help you get your stay in lane a little bit longer. From there, you're going to start building into your crit. In this game right now, crit is just busted. It's, it does so much damage. You want to start as early as possible. Um, so we're going to start pretty quick early with Fanatic's Desert. This is a great build build item. It's 2,600 gold. You're gonna get power. You're gonna start with your crit and you're gonna get attack speed. The passive on this is really good. It's gonna give you shield whenever your health drops below 30%. After that, your next item is gonna be a, a very situational item. It depends on the current game right now. So if there's a lot of healing on the enemy team, uh, a lot of healing, a lot of health regen, you wanna go with Sword of Decay. This is gonna decrease that healing. Um, this is gonna give you 30 power, 20 attack speed, sorry, 30 power, 20% critical hit and 25% attack speed. The passive dealing physical damage enemy hero decreases the hero's healing by 15% for four seconds each time. It's going to stack up three times. So if the enemy team has a lot of healing, if you notice Narbash, a Chimera, um, if they have a lot of sustain on the enemy team, this is the item that you want to go to to counter it. If you don't need anti-healing, the other item that I go into is called the electric stone. This item is just really cheap. The reason why I get it, um, you need crit. There's an item that we're going to get later where you have to have above 50% crit chance. This is going to help you get that above 50%. So you just need an item if you don't need the anti. This uh, gives you 20% chance, 
30% attacks because you're going to attack a lot faster. And then the passive itself is going to deal magical damage equal to 50% of your physical power and 25 bonus damage to the target and up to nearby five nearby enemies with every four basic attacks. Basically, the more that you attack an 18 fight, it's going to sh spread out dealing uh, magical damage equal to 50% of your power. So this is a really good item. It's cheap. It gives you attack speed. It gives you crit. So it can help get that other item. Now here, this is going to depend again on how the game is going. So if you're ahead and you're not worrying about if, the, if you're ahead, if the team is, if the enemy team is squishy, if you're not being dove uh, by the frontliner, if you can shred their frontline, then here is where you're going to go into um, treasure sword of the kingdom. This is your big crit item. It's going to be 70 power, 20% crit rate. This is going to give you, this is going to put you over 50% crit chance. So your damage is going to be increased a lot more. It's going to give you critical damage by 25% if critical rate is 50% or higher. This item is going to boost your crit damage. It's going to give you a good amount of power. It's going to be your big late game item. Now after that, if the enemy team is, is tanky by this stage of the game, if their frontliners are tanky, um, then you want to go with Satar Chainsaw. It's going to give you 50 power or nullify 40% uh, physical defense. And they're going to be dealing 15% bonus damage who has higher uh, max health than you do. So normally you're not going to be building any health items. It's just going to be, and uh, your the tanks on the enemy team will be health items with physical prots and, and health. So this item will be really useful to um, nullify their defense and to do more damage because they have more health. Now, last item is going to be the starter. We're going to get this upgraded. So you should get all those items built in first, and then we're going to go back, finish off our upgrade. I do like to keep our starter. The, the reason why is because the, the passive, or I'm sorry, the active, you're going to be able to, to teleport. Not having some of these carries don't have an escape. So having a teleport on your on your starter is going to be really useful. It's going to be in a 180 second cooldown. So if you are in a bad situation, you can go ahead and teleport out of there. This last item that I have here. So you've already filled built, you're full built, right? You got these items, but if the game is still really long, you got to get your starter upgrade and it's still really long. If you feel like the lifestyle isn't really being impactful in the game, um, if you want to go a, a different item other than I wouldn't sell your starter, I wouldn't sell any other items, not your starter because you need that starter. If you feel like the lifestyle isn't really that impactful, you can go with the merchant's jewelry box late game. This is going to give you 40 power and 20% attack speed. So it's going to give you a little bit less stats on the power, but the passive, you're going to be dealing bonus physical damage equal to 6% of the target's current health. Every time you do a basic attack to an enemy, whenever the, the game, the fight starts, that big frontliner is diving you. This item is going to allow you to shred a lot quicker whenever they're on you. So if you feel like that lifestyle, that lifestyle isn't really that impactful, if they have anti-heal, I would sell the, the emergency treatment over any other item in the, in the kit and pick up merchant story box. All right, guys, and that's going to be how you build and play Burdock. If you like this kind of content, like the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.